Hi, this is Kingsley. So, if you remember in the year 2020, there was a breaking news that techno phones were actually stealing users' information and subscribing them to services that they didn't want to and causing them to lose valuable data. And it was actually a big fiasco. Major news outlets like CNN and the BBC, The Verge and all those other tech blogs actually carried that news. Now, Techno or Transition Holdings, which is the company that makes Infinix Techno and ITEL, actually released a statement saying that it wasn't their fault that these uh, malwares or um, viruses were installed during the supply chain. And that made a lot of sense, you know, owing to the number of bloatwares that comes inside Transition phones like um, Infinix Techno and ITEL. Now, one year later, it turns out that it wasn't actually a techno problem, it was a Google problem. And uh, there were a lot of other devices from different manufacturers that were actually affected by this particular Trojan of virus that was going around at the time. It turns out that these devices were infected by um, a particular virus known as the Joker virus. Now, the Joker virus belongs to a family of um, malwares or Trojans known as Bread. The hackers that make these viruses make them with the intent of stealing users' information, users' monies, which I will explain shortly, and causing damages that sometimes it can take you a year or two before you realize it. Now, the Joker virus was first of all discovered in 2017. And since that time, Google has been putting up all sorts of defenses to make sure that these viruses don't come up again on Android phones. But it seems that um, it worked for a while. I mean, the defenses they put up. Now, as recent as 2021 now, as of August, many security firms have discovered that a lot of applications in the Play Store are infected with the Joker virus again. And so they are warning people against downloading this particular group of apps. Now, some of you might ask how these apps managed to get to the Play Store, how they managed to upload them into the Play Store. I mean, like, the Play Store is actually very secured. If you want to upload your app to the Play Store, your app has to go through a particular level of security checks by Google Play um, Security and all that before your app will be allowed to go into the Play Store. So how do these hackers manage to pass through all the security checks and upload these apps to the Play Store? So how these hackers managed to push the apps to the Play Store was actually very simple. Now, they use the tree called versioning. So how this works is they submit a clean version of the app to Google and Google Play or Google Protect will actually scrutinize the apps, check the apps, make sure that they are clean, which of course they are clean and they'll be vetted and then the next thing they'll be approved to be uploaded to the Play Store. Now, after the apps have passed through the security checks and they've been uploaded to the Play Store and people can download them, this is where the hackers actually now um, upload the viruses to the apps via software updates. I mean, several times your phone will prompt you to actually update the apps on your phone. So once you download the clean version of the app, it will be in your phone. And after a while, it will ask you to update the app. Once you update the app, the new updates will actually come with the Joker virus attached. And that's how the Joker virus gets into your device. Now, to make sure that this app is downloaded by as many users as they can, the um, people or the hackers that build these Joker virus apps will actually go on sites like YouTube, for instance, and run YouTube ads. So sometimes you want to watch a YouTube video, an ad appears and shows you a particular application that does so and so and so and so. And sometimes some of us follow those links and go to the Play Store and download those apps. And once you download those apps, you've actually downloaded the virus into your phone. The second way they actually make the app look attractive to download is when you go to the Play Store, if you're like me, the first thing I usually go and do is when I see an app, I um, look at the app, then I go to the review session, check how many star rating or what's the um, rating of the app, and then I read reviews and comments if the app is actually doing what the description says the app will do. Once you read these reviews and you are satisfied and you see a lot of five star rating, you just go ahead naturally and download the app, right? I mean, there are a lot of people that have downloaded the app. That's why they are, they are, they are leaving a lot of reviews there. So you just go ahead, you just go ahead and download the app into your phone. And that's another way the app actually goes far and they make sure that it's spread as much as they can and they catch as many victims as they can. As of September of 2020, over 24 apps were found on the Play Store to contain the Joker virus and Google acted quickly and deleted these apps from the Play Store. But before they could delete the apps from the Play Store, the, these apps combined had already been downloaded over 500,000 times. 
and they were downloaded all over the world in countries like America, um, England. In fact, most of North America and Europe, there were thousands of downloads of these particular apps. When you download these apps into your phone, first thing they do is to ask for access to a lot of things, which is what most applications do anyway. Now, naturally, once you install an application into a phone, the application is going to ask you for permission to many things. So most of these choker virus applications once you download them into your phone, they are going to ask you for permission to your notifications, permissions to your SMS, your contact list, and a lot of other um, parts of your device. Once you grant them this permission, most of these apps will be able to manage your phone calls, they'll be able to manage your SMS, they'll be able to manage um, your notifications and all that. So what they will do is, in the case of notifications, the app will actually um, disable notifications for certain applications in the device. For instance, if the Joker virus is the calendar app, for instance, when notifications come into the device via the calendar app, you will not be notified, but the operation will be going on in the background smoothly. The Joker virus apps usually connect themselves to advertisement websites and um, paid subscription services websites. These applications will actually go online and subscribe you to most of those services without you knowing. Now, most subscription services these days work with your mobile phone carriers. Most of them just need your device ID to confirm that you are the one that is making the request or you are the one that is making the transaction and the transaction will be approved expressly. Now, in countries where credit cards don't work as frequent as some countries in Europe, they actually, uh, most of the subscription services will be taking your prepaid airtime. So you realize that you had maybe um, $50 airtime on your phone or 50,000 Naira or 10,000 Naira airtime on your phone and after like two days all the money is gone and you didn't make phone calls, you didn't browse the internet, you didn't or even if you did all these things, um, the amount you have consumed is not actually up to $50 or 50,000 Naira but all that money will be gone because the subscription services that the Joker virus actually connects you to will actually be charging you. Now, the thing about the Joker virus is that most of these charges are so small that you might not even notice them. Now, they are so small that your bank will actually ignore notifying you that such transactions are going on. So all of these subscription services will keep taking your money in the background. Sometimes in a week, you might lose like $7, $5, which Come to think of it, it's not a big deal. But when that goes on for a while, you keep losing a large chunk of money. And if they are able to do this to, let's say, 5,000 people, I mean, that's a lot of money they've been able to extract in a week, right? What is unique about the Joker Virus app is that, as I said earlier, it can be there running at the background of your device for months and even years, depending on who you are and how you use your phone without you knowing. So the easiest way to know if you've been infected is first of all check your devices for illegal activities or illegal subscription services which you might not be able to know because these things happen in the background without your permission but if you check your bank account or you check your bank statement and you notice um, transactions going on and usually they are in, 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 in maybe 50 cents 10 cents um, one dollar and all that you might want to check your device or you might want to raise an alarm the first thing for you to do is to delete the applications that you think might be responsible for this and possibly you might have to do a factory reset of your device, right? You do a factory reset and make sure that um, these apps are gone. Secondly, a lot of these apps that are carrying this Joker virus malware are actually apps that look or sound similar to the original or the real app. There was this particular day I went to the Play Store to download um, Photoshop for mobile phones and then I realized that there were actually other applications there that were actually Photoshop. I nearly downloaded the wrong one. I just had to go and check the vendor. Instead of Adobe, it was one company I didn't even know. But the name was actually the same with the um, Photoshop Express, which is the one for mobile. So you might want to, first of all, make sure that you check the name of the app very well because that's one other way that they deceive you in downloading the wrong app. So if you go to the Play Store and you want to download an app, just make sure you check the vendor. Like in my case, it's Adobe. Make sure you check and make sure that the app is actually by Adobe Corporation before you download the app. Else, avoid such applications. And also, it is important to download apps that are on the Play Store. You know, 
one thing with the Android system is that you can download your app anywhere. Anybody can create an app without uploading it to the Play Store and you can install it on your phone. It will actually be better you go to the Play Store to download the app where you can actually um, see the vendors and make sure that you're actually downloading the right app, right? So as usual, my name is Kingsley. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and you can also subscribe to the channel if you want. I'll catch you again in the next one.